Welcome everyone to Cosplay for Confidence. First panel of Toricon. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a volunteer so far. So great job. Thank you all for coming so early in the morning to talk about confidence. So raise your hand if you're confident. Okay, we've got three. That's actually not bad. I'm assuming that one of the reasons you're here is to figure out well, what is this, and two, how can I be more confident? There are lots of parts to being confident, part of which is having fun with it, and one of those ways is to dress up the characters that make you feel more confident, and that's what I'll be going over today. There are tons of different things that you can do to make yourself look and feel confident, but it all starts with taking the first step, which is, being here. So I thank you all for attending. Again, my name is Riftwing. I'm Riftwing Designs. I have business cards. I think I've given them to most of you. And again, this will be recorded. I'm going to be posting it to YouTube to provide to those people who do not attend today. So with that, let's get started. We've got some furries in the room. Surprise! I thought this was an anime convention. So did I. <laughs> So first off, furries are people that like anthropomorphic or humanized animals, and many of them have things called personas, or personas, or characters, which are a type of character that you personally relate to. Do any of you have an OC original character, some character you created? She created this one. Aww. And we've got this beautiful purple and lime green. Or would you have a neon lime? It's like a lime. And a lime green. So yes, characters are one way to redefine yourself. Because as a human, you are who you are, you're your family, how you grew up, what your expectations are, what other people's expectations of you are. But when you make your own character, it can be purely you. Who you want to be, what you want to do. So for persona is a good way to introduce the idea of cosplay for confidence because you're making a character for confidence. And this is one of my characters. I actually have a clicker here. Let me see if I can get the clicker going. And then of course one of you guys will steal it and try to like click through the presentation. <laughs> really <laughs> addictive. So um, okay, we're all set. Let's get this little guy hooked up here. The magic. Technology guys, ready? Let's see if it works. Bang! I have a button! Which means I'm no longer tethered to that thing over there. <laughs> this is my persona human form. So, cat, Munich, it's kind of like, you know, um, like animorphs, trans. Figuration, yeah. turning into animals. Yeah, so that's me. Uh, <laughs> cat girl, right? So anime, oh, cat girl, Neko, oh, yeah, I know what a cat girl is. <laughs> Are cat girls furries? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's where the, the line starts to blur, but a cat girl, uh, and she is like one of those like emo goth kind of characters. <laughs> from, like, just both. Right? Oh, and then what happens? She, uh, she is one of those characters that is really kind of moody and getting to know herself and just, yeah, you know, growing up angsty kind of character, right? We've all been there. Edgy. Yeah. And of course, in human form, the same thing can be said, right? Got the cool camo pants on, the cat ears, the hoodie. But when you take off the ears and the tail, all of a sudden, you're back to human form again. So I could be anything before, but when I put on this outfit, I all of a sudden channel the power of Munich, the emo cat girl. <laughs> okay, maybe that's not confident, but that's being myself. And that's what you, I want you to think about when I talk about cosplay for confidence. Dressing up like someone you relate to, someone you want to be, someone you admire, in order to take those characteristics and become more like them in a good way. Does that make sense? All right, I got nods. You guys, this is great. I don't know if you've had more caffeine than I have, but this is great. I love it. So we're going to go through three lessons today, just three. The first one is obviously fear. 
When you are dressing up like something crazy, like some strange skeleton sans <laughs> character, Hello. yeah, in the corner, you have to conquer the fear of worrying about what other people think of you. This is a natural feeling. We've all been there. Like, oh my God, what are they gonna think about when I'm putting on an animal suit or I'm looking like a superhero walking around in the 30 degree snow? Yes. <laughs> Question. Oh, I was actually hiring you this morning. I'm like, Ash, how do I look? She's like, you look far. Do my makeup. Oh my god, Ash, how do I look? She's like, you look far. Yes, yeah, oh my god. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How do I look? She's like, shut up, you look far. <laughs> Which is true. A lot of times we are held to the qualities of the social media, right? So Instagram perfect, Pinterest perfect. You want to look perfect to get the likes. Well, why do you want the likes? This this is not in here, but I will tell you about this. Science! Anyone here is psychology, sociology major? No? Okay. <laughs> Talk to your friends that are nerds about that stuff. So what happens is, when you get a like, or you get somebody to comment on it, you see that phone buzz, and you're like, oh, ooh. that triggers some feel-good chemicals in your brain, right? So serotonins, and, and makes you feel like, oh, I like that. I like that people care about me. They post about me that they're saying these things, and it becomes an addiction. Just the same as like smoking cigarettes. You want those likes, and you want to look good, so you have to keep looking better, and you have to keep posting more, and you have to keep living up to the standards to get the likes. Everybody's nodding. They're like, oh my God, <laughs> like why? Oh, why is the world so perfect? And this is only something that we can change together. You have to realize first, first, it is to realize the problem. And second is to understand that you may only get one or two likes, you may get no likes, but does that matter if you feel good inside? Right? Yay! <laughs> so you really just have to understand it's not about them. It's not about the likes. It's about feeling good. It's about getting over your fear and understanding that this is your life. Do what makes you feel good, right? So, when you're feeling bad, when you're like, oh my god, nobody likes me, what am I doing with my life? Stop digging. Stop thinking about how bad things are. And this is hard. And there are times when you can feel down. And then there are times when you literally are down and you need to see a psychologist or a doctor or somebody for help. And all of those things, again, are normal. I've done it myself. There is no shame in asking for help if you cannot help yourself enough. I'm hoping this will help you all, but if you need more help, please talk to people that care about you. Or if you don't think they care about you, trust me, they do. First of all, they do. <laughs> and second of all, yes, there are lots of ways to get over depression and anxiety and all of those horrible things that happen because we think about other people and not ourselves. Yes. Scott Pilgrim. Anyone know this show? A couple people, yeah? So this is a character, Ramona Flower. She's just got colored hair, many different colors, but this one in particular is teal. And I want to use this as an example to show how using cosplay can help you get over the fear of public speaking. Just like I'm doing here, they say, and I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard this joke, and if you have, raise your hands and heckle me, okay? So they say that fear of public speaking is so bad that people would rather, when they die, be in the grave than give the eulogy speaking about the person who was dead. This is a true fact. Nobody wants to be up there, scrutinized by the public. Oh, what if they stutter? What if they sneeze? What if they don't look good? Ooh. <laughs> so what do you do? First, stop thinking about it. Focus on the audience. Think about, oh, how can I help people, right? Why am I up here? I'm up here because I want to help you. I am focusing on being confident to help you to continue. I mean, this is the first panel of the convention. If I can help you to walk with a little bit more spring in your step, maybe you'll have a better time. I would like that. Mm. So what happened here? This is my friend. This is the real, real person. This is the show. So she just got a nice black dress, got a wig, 
You can buy the wigs online, it's really easy. You can style them yourself, or you can buy them pre-styled, as long as you have money. <laughs> so she had this wig, and she had such a fear of public speaking that she joined a club called Toastmasters. Have any of you heard of this? Okay, so it's not about like, well, drinking and toasting. It's kind of the same thing, except there's no alcohol involved. So you're all good. Um, the idea is you go to this club, you practice speaking, in order to provide a good experience for everyone. And she joined the club, but she was still so nervous that she gave her first public speech with the wig on, so that she was channeling the energy of someone else. She wasn't herself, she was a character. And she knocked that thing out of the park. It was amazing. Because she cosplayed. It was just a wig. But she cosplayed for confidence, right? I like this. You got your smile in. So you have to have courage. If you're going to be able to get over your fear, you have to have courage. Now, how many of you guys know who I am cosplaying of today? <laughs> got a few. Okay, most. Okay, I think it's everybody. We're in the back. Good. Okay. <laughs> I told our volunteer he has to actually participate as well. <laughs> so I am all might. The number one superhero, and All Might has a muscle form. Strong, powerful, brave. He has this outward facing strength. But then he kind of shrinks down into this smaller form, his true form, right? And that true form is himself. He has to like flex in order to become the strong icon of peace. And yet, when he relaxes, he's this little scrawny dude that spits blood. <laughs> okay, there's a backstory to that, but we're not going to get into that here. <laughs> the idea is, his true self is not the same. It has the same ideals. It's the same mentality. It's the same ideas that he believes in. The same strength in those eyes. But he has to flex and pretend, well not pretend, but he puts on an even larger, prouder facade when he is the tall might superhero. Because that's what he thinks other people need to see. Spoilers. He doesn't always do that. So when he's in his small form and the public finds out, first they're shocked, but then they realize, oh, it's the same guy. And he has a hard time going, oh wait, I'm the same guy. Wow. <laughs> right? It's the same for cosplay for confidence. When you dress up in a costume and you're running around like this giant six foot tall animal, it's much easier to pretend or to be confident. You don't even have to pretend to be confident because you are the character. But when you take off that mask, when you step out into the world and you say, this is me, this is my small form. All right, Kate. <laughs> this is my small form. Um, that means that you are taking the next step. So what is viewed versus what is true? What is it that you really are versus what are people seeing? Again, that social media thing. What is it that you're putting online versus who you are? And we all know that there's people on there that have perfect lives online. Beautiful children, happiness, wonderful food. And they don't talk about their car getting hit or not having enough money to pay their rent, or maybe they have some medical issue. Real life doesn't show. And so thinking about everybody can have a bad day. And everybody is themselves, whether or not they post their true selves. So what's your true self? How do you connect your true self to who you can be in front of other people? And that is hard. That is very hard to stand up for yourself, to be yourself, to be courageous enough to say, it's okay if I'm not like everyone else. And it is okay if you're not like everyone else. I think we can all say we're not like everyone else, but what if everyone else is like us and they're just pretending? Here's a good example. And I know, I hope, most of you have heard of this. So in February, a whole bunch of fans got together for the biggest convention of the year. They were wearing all of the co 
colors and costumes and having crazy parties. Face paints, crazy headdresses, all kinds of outfits with their favorite characters. And they would pay hundreds, thousands of dollars for tickets to get into this exclusive convention. Do you know what it's called? No? It's called the Super Bowl. Oh. <laughs> Dressing up like their favorite characters. Wearing their team colors. Being able to go wild about the people and the things and the stories that they care about. And yet that's normal and this is not? What's wrong, guys? If they can be confident wearing their colors, dressing their living rooms, decorated. You've all seen houses like this. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, the throws, all of the crazy carpets, and they've got everything on the walls. And that's normal. So when you think about true, why is it that they get to do that and we can't walk around with capes every day, huh? And I've had that ask at other cosplay for confidence. Why? Dude, I don't know. Why don't you just get out there, take your cape, flare. Have you seen those capes that they put on? Um, they've been a couple of those fancy, like, starlit little things now. There's, like, a, the award shows, like the Oscars and the Emmys and all that. People are starting to wear capes. Maybe. Maybe they're coming back in. Wouldn't that be cool? Capeless. So the magic of this cape is magnets. But costumes are everything you make them to be. So put on that cape and be brave. Or put on a mask and be brave. So this is discussion time. We've got face paint, hoodie, full head, hair, 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 ears, ah, face cover, and just amazing hair and a hat. Okay. <laughs> So, everyone here has something on their head that's, oh, and you are lovely. <laughs> the normal, wonderful aunts, again, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Not to exclude them. She had to have a party. Yeah. No, I, and we thank you so much. It's fantastic. So, what happens when you're wearing face paint, a mask, hair, ears? Yes? Something goes wrong. It's like my nose just did, and I'm freaking out about it right now. But, um, I was like, I was like, wait, why is my nose too And I looked at my camera and now it's like, paint is like chipping on my nose. I'm like, oh. Do any of you notice that the nose is chipping? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because I put the wig over it. <laughs> <laughs> I put the wig over it. I'm like, oh, that So two okay. things here. So you worry about appearances, but you yeah. also want to wear the mask of the character. Yeah. What happens when you put the face paint on? How do you feel? I feel like the character, you know. I want to like, I want to carry this around and be just like the Lord's Matory, right? <laughs> you just want to be that character. Why is that character so cool? Well, he's a me, okay? He likes. Well, he's you. Yes. Okay. He likes See, kind of his brother. He loves pines. Oh. Um, likes ketchup. <laughs> Love ketchup. Off, off screen drinking ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> off screen drinking. Absolutely. So that gives you some sort of confidence because you are that character. Oh, uh, when I'm in my fursuit, and I'm actually walking on my street in my fursuit, yeah. going to one of my friend's house. And this little girl, she came up to me, she grabbed my tail, she was like, You're so fluffy. Yeah. And my heart just melted. I'm just like, Oh, come here. She gave me a big hug. She's just like, My baby's so fluffy. Why are you doing this? I'm like, oh. It was great. And it makes you feel good. And they like who you are too. So sometimes it's that reinforcement, like, wait, people like me like this? Okay, I can do this. Maybe I can't be myself yet, but I can do this. Good, thank you. Anyone else want to share? Not yet. <laughs> okay. And Mimi Q's just gonna hide in the corner. Wait, 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 Mimi Q. Wait, wait, I got something funny. Mimi Q, you're faced with a bunch of people. What do you do? Mimi Q just falls <laughs> over. <laughs> session at the end. This person, who is only to be known as Pinkie Pool, is um, My Little Pony fan, likes Pinkie Pie, also likes Deadpool. And when he puts on this mask, oh. he goes from very shy 
to like totally cool crazy Deadpool. Why is that? Because of the mask, right? Again, you're not yourself anymore. You are able to channel the power, the energy, the fun that comes with the character that you want to be. And he also has some social anxiety problems, but let me tell you, as soon as he puts that mask on, he is fun-loving, crazy, cool, and that is something, again, that we hear a lot about in the furry fandom. Why is it that when you put on the fursuit, why is it when you put on the mask and the outfit that all of a sudden you can be that character? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. It's because you're cosplaying for confidence. That character gives you the confidence that you cannot show in your human form yet. And it may take years, decades, maybe it'll never happen, but I want you to try. <laughs> because the idea is if you can take the elements of that character when you take the mask off, you're beginning to get to the next step. So, you have to conquer your fear. Remember, it doesn't matter what other people think. Don't be addicted to those likes online. Okay, the likes are good, but don't do it just for the likes. Like, I'm obviously posting on my social media after this, but I'm doing it because advertising. <laughs> Mostly because of advertising. Uh, and also because I do enjoy it too, and I want to show other people, hey, this is normal, right? This is normal. Have the courage to be, be and believe. So I didn't actually mention that. Be, leave, be. Have the courage to be. We went over this. Have the courage to be yourself. Have the courage to be different. Because it's okay to be different. And have the courage to believe in yourself. You can dress up. You can go out here. You can walk around with capes. Because we have one, two, three, four people with capes now. The capes are taking over. <laughs> Love it, guys. Mm -hmm. And cosplay for confidence. I'll take this moment before I go into examples to again advertise since we have new people here. First of all, I am recording. This is going on YouTube, so if there is anything that you say or do not want online, please let me know. I am here to help, not to make anyone ashamed because this is all about confidence. Thank you so much. You both look lovely. Anyone else? Who's the star? Awesome. <laughs> okay. Any questions on what we've gone over so far? It makes sense. But how do you go from being dressed up here to walking around the street like a normie, right? Mm -hmm. You guys missed the, the best example, which is why is it that people can dress up like sports fans with crazy colors, uniforms with their favorite characters, living rooms decorated to the nines? And yet when they see an otaku room with posters and figures, it's not as cool. Come on, guys. Get over it! That's the jump to do. Get over it. It's cool. It's normal. Everyone is different because otherwise it'd be boring. <laughs> yeah. So, this is another character that I originally started to present this in. Her name is Brass Knuckles. She is a minotaur from My Little Pony. If any of you know My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, there is a dude called Iron Will. Oh, God. Right? So he is like, the Mr. T! He is powerful, he is strong, and he will make you confident! You're like, oh my God, what just happened? <laughs> I'm channeling the energy and the power of Iron Will vis-a-vis -vis the female version, the gender bend, Brass Knuckles. Mm. And when I get up on stage, because this is one of the first presentations that I did, by dressing up as her, I could then take that energy, get on stage, and not be as nervous. Because trust me, <laughs> I used to be so terrified, my hands would shake when I presented. But with practice and understanding that, again, it's for the audience, it's not for me. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter if my cape falls off again because the magnets are acting up. That's okay! <laughs> it's about the presentation and not about my cape. Even though we're going to keep saying, it's going to be Capes 101 by the end, I swear. <laughs> so, look at how it blows in the breeze! And it's supposed to be very windy today, so get ready, guys. <laughs> so, this is my partial fursuit. I've got uh, actual digital grade legs, horns, and just a normal human top, because Minotaurs do that. It's pretty cool. Human form! Da, 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 da. Literally, I just took off the hooves and the horn. Like, that's it, guys. When you're thinking about cosplay for confidence, take the elements of cosplay, take off the wigs, take off the ears. 
You could probably still wear the hoodie and it'd be amazing. You could still carry around the plushie, it'd be awesome. You take off the face paint, you're still sans, just without the face paint. Like, you could wear that hoodie and be like, yo, dude, like, I got this. And then still you catch up with the rest of us. Literally, when we were walking up, I saw um, I saw a coffee shop and was like, can we, can we go in there? But there's like ketchup packets or something in there. Please. <laughs> there will be many today. Don't in the food trucks. There's gonna be some food trucks. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Remember last time where I got ketchup on my shirt? The virus thought I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good conversation. <laughs> All right. All right. So, the other thing you can do is when you take off the layers, you can put layers back on. So this is my business professional, business professional look, right? So for those of you that have real jobs and you have to kind of dress up nice and you can't just wear jeans and t-shirts, what if you wear a shirt that's the same color as the character and you put a little nice jacket on top? What if you have a tie and that tie has little animals on it? Uh, furthermore, which is a Virginia convention, they actually gave out ties to fursuiters instead of badges one year. And everybody wore them to work and it was a nice tie, but guess what? It was also the logo of the furry convention. <laughs> okay, what, what happens? You know, but do they know? Okay. I see a lot of you have lanyards with your badges on them. One thing that you can do at work, some work professional environments, how do you wear lanyards? or little pulley things. So you can usually customize your lanyards or your pulleys and have a little logo or design on it. If you make it one of the things that you're a fan of, now you're showing that you're a nerd, but you're also confident about it. And what if, what if, the coworker sees it and they go, oh my gosh, it's a Pokemon lanyard! <laughs> and you're like, what did you just say? <laughs> did you say Pokemon? Yes! So now they have betrayed that they're also a nerd and they know what they're talking about. So now you've got a new friend. That's how easy it is. Literally how we met. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> story time! Okay, so we were at a campground and you know I'm up sitting there and I'm playing the Megalovania theme. Da -da 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 yes! Da -da -da -da. She comes over. Is that Sans the Skeleton's theme? I'm just like. Oh my god, sit down. Now, and we just started talking, and then she's like, you know Benny and Luigi? We just got a hold of the bubble, cup head, everything. I'm just like, you both play? And she's like, where's your number? Yeah. <laughs> Best buddies forever! Best buddies forever. I love it. That's a perfect example. Anyone else ever had that happen to you? Okay, again, <laughs> this is, it happens a lot at, at real work environments. When you um, are courageous enough to show that flair, to put out those figures, to hang up the posters, to wear the lanyards, and again, lanyards are going to be on sale. I'm not getting paid for this, but lanyards are going to be on sale starting at 10 o'clock in the field house. You're going to have all kinds of cool merch and swag. And the idea behind why I'm saying this is nice is because if you wear it, it'll make you feel better because it's like, oh, this is the stuff that I like. And you'll, again, have other people recognize you. On the other side of that is also people here, everybody here, if they're at the convention and not doing normal school stuff, which is, why would they do that? <laughs> if you see something you like, like these wonderful princesses, we got the, it's like a boozette and a chumpet. I'm a huge Nintendo fan. So I can comp, no, I am actually going to compliment your, I love your outfits. I think they're fantastic. And they look really warm, which is great. So, <laughs> so <I'm not> warm. <laughs> And so we can have a conversation and start to talk about my interests. How do I know about all this Nintendo stuff? Well, I happen to, in later slides, have a Bowser outfit. Pre-Bowser, it was actually a Bowser outfit. And then we can have this, ooh, okay, so why do you like this? What are you doing? Hey, is it okay if I get your, your social media information? Can we be friends? That's how you start a relationship. By talking about things that you're both interested in and building off of that to say, hey, we have similar interests. It's cool. It's great. That's how to be confident. To be with other people that can help to support you too. So make friends. Introduce yourselves. It's okay. They're gonna love you. It's not bad even if your nose is chipping off. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't teasing you, I promise.
<laughs> yeah, nobody's going to notice. It's the little things that you notice are not a big deal. Sure. A lot of times the things that you think are a big problem in the long run are not problems at all. It's not part of the big picture. The big picture is meeting friends, being happy, being confident, and living the life that you should be instead of worrying too much about what others think. Any questions on what we've done so far? All right, hydration break. Remember, stay hydrated, guys. Very, very important. All right, so what am I doing? I'm wearing blue because that was the Minotaur color. I got my little brass knuckles uh, bracelet. Now, side note on, on the brass knuckles character Russo, right? Cool name, very powerful. Not good for TSA. <laughs> I took this bracelet through the metal detector. Oh, no. And they're like, what are you doing with this contraband? And I'm like, oh my gosh. It's literally just. A bracelet. It's not even like real brass knuckles. It's actually just a little mini one, like ah, two inches thin. And they're like, "This is too similar to the real thing. You could hurt someone. We're gonna have to confiscate it." And I'm like, "No, my character!" And so, so don't don't make a character called Brass Knuckles and wear fake brass knuckles because they're gonna get you. They went through my checked bag, which had a whole bunch of little brass knuckle keychains. Again, not weapons. Little little brass knuckle keychains. They went through the whole thing. I'm like, oh. so. Well, again, when you're making original characters, think of a name that's not related to weapons or contraband, and you'll be okay. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. You gotta redo everything. You wouldn't like my one character then. <laughs> this is one of my friends. He was at a panel with me. He said, it's okay. Put yourself out there. And that way, again, you can connect with people that have similar likes. Create friendships. Because... You don't need to be with people that put you down. They call those toxic. Don't be with toxic people that make you feel bad. It's not good for you. You can talk to them if they're making you feel bad. Address those situations. And I'm actually going to be doing a, uh, a panel tomorrow called Plus Ultra, finding the hero on you, in which I'm going to talk a little bit about confidence and, and ways to talk to people and to say, that makes me uncomfortable. Why is this a problem? There's actually a whole science to Addressing the problems in a way that will help everyone instead of just causing more, more problems. And that's um, if you, mm, uh, SBI is what it's called if you want to look it up online. There's an SBI method of conversations, which talks about the situation, what's the problem, the behavior, how does it make you feel, and the impact. And if you write, um, if you write out uh, your problem that way and then you talk to somebody and address it that way, it helps to have a more level head. It's called the SBI method. I know, I do a lot of these panels, so it's like, oh, I can't help myself, I want to help you. Uh, so SBI is one way to do that. The other way is just to be like honest and get rid of people that make you feel bad. So we have about 20 minutes. Speaking of Pokemon, anyone see these guys? It's Team Skull, guys. Oh yeah! So Team Skull is from one of the newer Pokemon games. It's a whole bunch of dudes that just like wear skeleton looking stuff, so totally up your alley. And they do like these like crazy like rap things like yeah 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 <laughs> so you're gonna see I'm I'm sure you're gonna see at least a few Team Skull guys here. The funny thing about Team Skull is that they just the groups keep growing and there's more and then like you find more and it's just like it doesn't matter if you've never met these people in your life. They will fill an escalator. They will make. <laughs> they just spawn. <laughs> You're like, wait a second, I thought I killed the bat, and then there's just more of that. More! Yeah, when it came in, it was about like five cents. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes finding people that are in the same genre as you, the same characters you, the same groups, all of a sudden you already have that friendship. You can actually talk to them instead of... One of the things that happens at conventions afterwards, and I'm sure you've heard this, is post-con depression. Um, PCD. The, the sadness of leaving the joy that we had because we were with people that were so similar. One way to get over post-con depression is to keep the con going by meeting these people, getting their names, getting their social media, again asking, don't demand. <laughs> if they don't want to be your friend, I'm sorry, but find someone else. We always want to respect people's boundaries. But by getting their names, their numbers, staying in touch, starting a chat group, whether it's on Steam or whatever social media you prefer, you can continue those friendships. And maybe you'll meet in another convention. Maybe it becomes a posse where you guys meet at every convention and do all kinds of crazy stuff together. 
That's one way to help to beat post-cut depression. It, it still may happen, but remember, it's okay. You can do these things outside of the comments. Cool. Oh, here's our sparkler after the day. It's actually kind of similar, no offense meant. <laughs> so what I'm saying here is, you can have the craziest character in the whole world. It doesn't matter if you like that character. Because the most important thing is to have fun with it. Okay? Ebony Voltron, instead of being this great giant robot, what if you just wear a shirt that's green, a jacket that's red, some jeans and yellow shoes? So now we're going to kind of transition into how do I take the cosplay out of the street? That's the everyday cosplay. Have fun with accessorizing your normal clothes to be able to wear the same kinds of things that make you feel confident when you're here in costume. So how do we do that? First off, if any of you guys want to take a photo, or I'll post this online again, there are places you can look. This tumbler is amazing. Casual closet cosplay shows like sets. Like you look up a name, a character, and they will have an outfit. Like you can look up like Superman, right? And there would be like a nice tie, like a jacket, pants, even cufflinks, you know, little accessories, <laughs> bracelets, earrings, those kinds of things. There used to be a website called Polyvor. It's not what it sounds like, it's literally just about clothes. <laughs> I know a few of you get it, the rest it's okay. Uh, that, that phrase helps you to find outfits online. And the other one is Pinterest. Pinterest is amazing for finding outfits and inspiration for clothes. All right. Scarfs. Anyone know what the scarf is? Yes. Fudge. Listen, it's I not have fudge. I had I had the virus and scarf with me in the car. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh wait, people are gonna think that the virus died. Oh it's a it's a beautiful red scarf, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. Okay. So if you recognize that, you know the character. This one in particular is a little hazy in the projector, unfortunately. It's a Doctor Who scarf. So she was just walking down the street and like two random exchange students were like, oh my gosh, Doctor Who! <laughs> and they asked for her picture out of the blue, like normal walking down the street, but she was wearing a scarf because it's snowy out. That's everyday cosplay. You're wearing the scarf of a character. Just like fans wear the scarves of the soccer teams that they like. Same thing. That's one way to do it. Here's another example. I have a friend who has, uh, she has a femme chef. This is Commander Shepard from Mass Effect. You're able to customize your characters, and this is what her character looked like. So, kind of heavy, smoky makeup and a red hair and a bun. And so she wears her hair like this same style when she has to give presentations at work. No one will know, except her, that she's dressed up as Commander Shepard. Stealth cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> and she did presentations with VIPs coming through the company. She wears, so this is the Mass Effect logo and color. She will wear red and black. She will wear those colors to have the elements of the character. And she, she rocks it. She loves it. And she doesn't have to tell anyone, but the people that she knows are nerds should be like, hey dude, I wore my shepherd outfit today. And I'd be like, yeah, like awesome! <laughs> All the time. As I showed before my brass knuckles outfit, I will wear blue and black because those are my power colors. When I wear them, I just feel more confident. What are your power colors? Do any of you have colors that just make you feel really good when you wear them? Yes, red and black. Red and black, another red and black. Cool. Anyone else? Purple? <laughs> okay? If you don't yet have power colors, maybe that'll be your homework assignment. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on, man. The homework. I know. But seriously, think about it. What, what characters do you like? What colors do you like to wear? Besides just black or like jeans, what colors can you add to your outfit? Like, oh, let's go back here. Okay, so you have Voltron, Power Rangers. You know how like those characters, everything they wear is that color? Like Pink Ranger only wears everything pink. <laughs> right? The, the princess, everything is pink. I, why? 
A, because it's good for branding, but B, maybe it is their power color. So think about that. All right. G.I. Joe. This one's amazing. So I had another friend come to one of the first presentations I gave, and he said, you know what, this is my low light costume. It's literally just some, like he's a construction guy. It's literally just his construction stuff, and he put like the night vision goggles on. <laughs> so now when he's out working with all the men, he can still be a nerd, because he knows that he's wearing his G.I. Joe outfit, right? That's cool. That's the elements of the everyday cosplay. Any questions so far? You're, you're all happy? A couple of you need more caffeine, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have 15 more minutes. I think it's an hour long panel, right? Yeah. Who else we got? Oh, Ninja. This is Ninja. Everyone, this is Ninja. He's here, you can't see him, it's okay. <laughs> oh, dear. So literally, it's just black, right? Those are his power colors. And I just put that a little Ninja mask on. Bang! Ninja! I know. Ah! Okay, Steven Universe. Any kids? Oh, God, right? Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, so she is a symbol of power and love. One of the strongest women, uh, gems, they're not really female, they're, they're genderless. So, this is what a real cosplayer looks like. Okay, not everybody can rock that. I actually got her. So this is Willow Wish on Tumblr. I got her permission to post this. She is amazing, right? Gorgeous. Love the hair. Natural hair. Great outfit. Can everyone rock this like she does? <laughs> probably not. <yeah. laughs> no, probably not. Definitely not. So one of the things about cosplay that they don't tell you, again, when you're thinking about the social media gotta be perfect thing, is it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to have the gauntlets and the hair and the skin color. You don't have to be thin. You can be yourself and still cosplay. So this is me, pale white girl me, right? All I did is I wore black and I just got some gloves off of Etsy. I actually made those, but you can just buy gloves, right? So it doesn't matter whether or not you are the perfect model or not. You can still have those elements. And again, gloves, scarves, those kind of things, they really help you to wear the elements of cosplay every day. So gloves. And this is one of those things that I told you about, the kind of polyvore style, where you can look online and they'll show you outfits for inspiration. So if you can't figure it out yourself, you can go here and figure it out. So one way to do that is, okay, looks great, right? How much money do you think this outfit costs? If you bought it online, uh, a hundred. A hundred. I don't know. Usually, there's a totally expensive. I think she's probably a hundred. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay around uh, fifty. Okay. I'll say fifty. What'd you say? Thirty. Thirty. Okay. No. <laughs> there's a bunch of expensive stuff here. If you bought all of this separately, I guarantee you it'd be a few hundred dollars. <clears throat> so, how many of you have three hundred dollars to spend on the costume? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> What do you do? Where do you go to do everyday cosplay when you can't afford to buy new stuff, to wear cool outfits, to look like the characters, to be more confident? Goodwill! Goodwill! <laughs> that is the exact right answer. You guys, thank you. You jumped right into this. I love you guys. Uh, well, that's because we've actually gone to Goodwill for cosplay shopping. <laughs> <laughs> we posted similar panels, too. Yeah. Cool! This is great. I'm, I'm glad. So tell me about <laughs> the things you get at Goodwill. Things you get well, um... Hat shirts, yeah. a whole outfit, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like aside from my hat, I got my entire Ash Ketchum cosplay at Goodwill. That and you can get stuff, and you can alter it. Yes. So yes, you can alter it, you can cut it, you can color it, you can resize mm -hmm. things if it's similar, but it's a little bit too big or too small. I've actually added panels into the sides of shirts before if it's exactly what I'm looking for, and you can put it somewhere where people don't see it. That's good. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. I got my entire complex up for my wig and hat from Goodwill, and then I made all of my knives out of duct tape. Oh my gosh, okay, would you mind standing up and showing everyone? Show the glass, please, here. <laughs> <laughs> duct tape, guys. Duct tape makes the world go around. Duct tape and cardboard. Oh my gosh, yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Actually, those knives look fantastic, and they are appropriately bound. Yes. Per convention rules! <laughs> so we have a rule follower here, everyone. Thank you for sharing. Yes? 
Goodwill. I'm not gonna ask you how much you paid, but I guarantee you it's less than fifty dollars. Plus or minus the duct tape. I think it was actually like less than twenty. Less than twenty. For an amazing outfit, and you you, you t uh, painted the hat. Yeah. Made the props. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Uh, my my belt is also made of duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> so this was an old belt that I had. It's like from some outfit, like you buy the pants and it comes with the belt and you're like, I'm never gonna wear this belt ever. But I'm one of those people that can't throw stuff out because I'm like, I could use this for a costume someday. <laughs> he and I finally realized, ooh, this is it. So I tried painting it and the paint just, it did not stick. So I literally put yellow duct tape over the top of it. And that's how I got my belt. <laughs> duct tape is amazing for costumes and it's like $2 a roll. You can use coupons, oh my God. Let's talk coupons, guys. <laughs> And you're like, wait a second, where'd my mother come from? <laughs> oh my god. Couponing wow. is amazing for costumes. So, there are multiple ways to do this. Old school way, go through like the, the Sunday newspaper. But for clothes, you're not going to find a lot of that stuff. So the best way to save money on clothes is for Goodwill, there are certain days of the week where certain colors are on sale. So you can actually figure out like, ooh, red dot day is 20% off everything that's on the red tags. You have to either call them or check online to see what it is, but if you go certain days of the week, you can get discounts. If you go with your parents or grandparents, there are senior discounts, and they can buy it for you at an even cheaper rate. For supplies, like paints and tape, glue, scissors, sewing stuff, Michaels, Michael's Joanne, uh, Walmart's that are mess. Walmart, what's the other one? There's another, AC Moore. Mm -hmm. These all have coupons. I know that AC Moore accepts anyone else's coupons. It doesn't have to be just them. Uh, Joanne has an app that you can download that has coupons. And if you sign up for their mailing list, whether the physical mailing list or their email list, you will always get coupons. Always. Like, they will not stop sending you coupons. Always between 20 to 50% off one item. Now, if you can afford it, I just keep going and every time I'm not shopping, I'm like, I'm going to get one thing today and it's going to be 50% off. Because none of us have tons of money to spend on costumes. And if you do, um, talk to me afterwards. <laughs> so you can use those, uh, definitely apps, emails, even stuff like uh, the big department stores. If you sign up for their email list, you can oftentimes get coupons. Holidays for real stores, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, Fourth of July, all the, the, the big national holidays, they'll always have sales. So you can look online and, and again look at the newspapers and you can find amazing coupons like it's 40% off of sale items on the clearance rack and you're like, hello friends. <laughs> <laughs> now, be careful, don't buy too much besides your budget, but this is a great way to be able to use your money wisely to make these cosplays. So with that, it is 9.20. I'm gonna go forward a little bit so we can get to the end. Obviously, there are thousands of different cosplays that you can do. It's only limited by your budget and your imagination. All right, this is my Bowser. Ooh. Right? So originally, they're like, oh, I'm going to do this skimpy, cool Bowser. I found this on Google. It's from Kitty Maxima on DeviantArt. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that. So I actually did this old school goth trip pants. Just a yellow shirt. Just a, one I had, like, it was like some random store. And I just threw a green hoodie on top. Like, this is closet cosplay. It still looks amazing, right? Yeah. You just gotta put the, put the wig on, and even without it, I, I wear that all the time. It's my Bowser shirts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing is nail art. Anyone seen nail stickers before? Yeah. They are amazing. Now, they're a little expensive, but they last like a couple of weeks, and they're really good if you have problems with like nail biting or picking at your nails because you don't want to ruin the stickers. So there are themes like Batman and Borderlands. They're just cool and like anything. There's like the last unicorn style nail. It's just, they're gorgeous. And okay, we'll go here. So there was this rumor about Knights of the Old Republic uh, possibly being a spin-off. Nobody knows if it's true or not. But, Star Wars fans, anyone? Okay, most of the room. 
This is one of my heroes, Nomi Sunrider. She was an amazing Old Republic Jedi. Uh, if you read comics, it's cool, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, this is my character. <laughs> this is my character, right? So literally, I photoshopped in the lightsaber. Uh, but I do have the handle, but I don't have the glowy thing because that's you know you can buy lightsabers. They're expensive and they're very heavy and unwieldy, but they're they're real. There are actual like lightsaber dueling clubs out there, so don't be ashamed. There are people that enjoy this too. So what happens when I let go of the lightsaber? That's it. I am now cosplaying my Jedi, and I wore this to the premiere because remember for the premiere of the most recent Star Wars movie, they didn't allow weapons, and it was like. Oh, that was like half the fun of Star Wars! So yeah, that's everyday cosplay. And outfits, again, you can search. Ray, literally just wear stuff that looks like dirt. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you guys have something brown that you can steal or borrow? Borrowing from people's closets, parents, aunts, siblings. If you ask, please ask. Yeah, so that's also a great place to get costume elements. And our favorite, the emo Kylo Ren. This is <laughs> you guys are already laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. Black. Okay? Easy. All you gotta do is kinda look bad and then like have like that crazy pants that go all the way up to your chest. You can be fun. <laughs> and again, if you don't have pants that go up to your chest, you put a piece of fabric and then you do some duct tape around it. <laughs> Literally, super easy duct tape makes the world go around. So, what did we go over today? Conquer fear. It's okay. You're not alone. We are all nerds here together, right? Yes. Have the courage to be yourself. Have the courage to believe that you are not alone, that you can wear these outfits. That if people laugh, they actually may not be laughing. They may be like, that's so cool, but I'm like, is this okay? It's, it's okay. And again, accept yourself. Be brave. Understand that everyone is different and that sometimes we are not all the perfect Pinterest people that we seem to be online. So with that, I hope that it helps you to understand the elements of cosplaying for confidence. Thank you all. Woo!